Ladies and gentlemen. This episode is sponsored by Advanced Skills Company, the official agent of JPI Healthcare in Iraq. I personally use the products of JPI Healthcare in my clinic for years now, and throughout the years, these products have been amazing in terms of providing excellent image quality at the lowest radiation dose possible, and they are durable, reliable, and efficient. I recommend if you are looking to establish your radiology practice, whether in a clinic, in a center, or in a hospital setting, to go to the JPI Healthcare website, see their products for yourself, and then call Advanced Skills Company if you are in Iraq, and these guys will provide the best possible solutions, whether in terms of hardware or software. I will leave the contact information in the video description, and don't forget to use the magic word highlights in radiology, because you will get a 10% discount on all JPI Healthcare products till the end of 2024. Hello everybody and welcome to a new episode of Highlights in Radiology Season 2. In today's episode, we are going to talk about a very common condition, which is carpal tunnel syndrome. Before we start, I want to remind you to subscribe, like, share, and tell your friends about us. This is Dr. Ahmad Baya Abdul Wahab, and this is Highlights in Radiology Season 2. Stay with me. Carpal tunnel syndrome is defined as clinical symptom complex secondary to compression of the median nerve at the carpal tunnel. It is seen most commonly at the third to fifth decades of life and it's more common in females than males. It is presented most commonly with pain, numbness, and tingling at the median nerve distribution, which includes the thumb, the index, the middle finger, and the radial half of the ring finger. The pain increases at night with or without burning sensation. The sensory findings can be minimal to complete anesthesia. Late in the course of the disease, there will be muscle atrophy with loss of function, which includes opponent's weakness at the beginning and then proceeds to atrophy of the opponent's muscle. The adductor pollicis brevis muscle will be involved in early stage and then the other signs will start to appear which includes tinal sign, which is produced by tapping over the nerve, and the fallen test, which causes symptoms in 30 seconds with wrist force in palmar flexion. The electrodiagnostic test of the median nerve conduction will show different findings. It is mostly idiopathic in etiology. Also, it can be seen with Golis fracture, inflammatory processes like rheumatoid arthritis, gout, pseudogout, amyloid, Median nerve tumors like fibromas and hamartomas, also tumors extrinsic to the median nerve like ganglion, lipoma, and hemangioma. Treatment can be conservative or surgical. Conservative treatment includes neutral position wrist splinting and steroid injection into the carpal tunnel. Surgical treatment includes transverse carpal ligament release, which can be done either by open surgery or endoscopically. So what radiology can offer in carpal tunnel syndrome? Well, plain radiography is basically useless in carpal tunnel syndrome. It can show displaced captate fracture, or sometimes it can show deposits of amyloid. Like for example, in this X-ray image, you can see the displaced captate bone fracture. On MRI, on T1-weighted images, we will see intermediate signal intensity and swelling or segmental enlargement of the median nerve at the level of the pisiform bone. Also, we will see flattening of the median nerve and palmar bowing of hypo-intense flexor retinoculum at the level of the hamate bone. Like, for example, in this T1-weighted fat-saturated axial image, you can see compression of the median nerve with bowing of the hypo-intense flexor retinoculum. We might see displaced proximal half of captate fracture. Impingement in cases of perilunar dislocation, sometimes we see fractures of the radius, like Coley's or Smith's fracture. For example, in this T1 weighted axial image, you can see there is an accessory muscle compressing the median nerve at the level of the carpal tunnel. 
on titrated imaging, we will see hyperintensity. This hyperintensity can be diffuse or focal with enlargement of the median nerve identified on axial cross sections. If you look at this titrated fat saturated image, axial view of the wrist, you can see the median nerve showing hyperintensity, suggesting a rotated or inflamed median nerve at the level of the carpal tunnel. Sometimes we might see pseudoneuromas, which is a swelling of the median nerve near or proximal to carpal tunnel. Hyperintense ganglion can also be seen, which projects deep to the carpal tunnel and compress the canal. For example, in this situated axial image, you can see a ganglion that's located deep in the carpal tunnel, projecting on the carpal tunnel, causing compression of the carpal tunnel and subsequently median nerve. Other example, in this situated fat saturated image, you can see the median nerve showing increased signal intensity, suggesting inflamed or irritated nerve at the level of the carpal tunnel. Also intermediate to hyperintense thickening of the tenosynovia of flexor tendons can be seen. After contrast injection, we will see enhancement of the synovia. So if you look here at this T1 weighted fat saturated post contrast image, you can see the median nerve showing post contrast enhancement. Another example, median nerve post contrast enhancement is easily seen. Fibrosis of the median nerve will appear hypointense on T1 and T2 weighted imaging, and this happens in late cases, of course. So what's the differential diagnosis in cases of carpal tunnel syndrome? Well, here we have a good list which includes cervical radiculopathy, pronate arteri syndrome, thoracic outlet syndrome, decurvian tenosynovitis, carpometacarpal arthritis, fractures of the distal radius, and carpal instability. In cervical radiculopathy, we should see disc protrusion or extrusion or osteophytes, sometimes central canal or foraminal stenosis. C5-6 commonly simulate the symptoms. Like, for example, in this sagittal T2-weighted image, we can see there are multiple osteophytes, multiple disc protrusions, and spinal canal stenosis, especially at C5-6 level. Pronate arteries syndrome commonly overlap with carpal tunnel syndrome. It may cause signal changes in median nerve distribution on fat-saturated images. The pronate arteries, flexor carpi radialis, palmaris longus, flexor digitorum superficialis will reveal hyperintense signal changes secondary to denervation edema, which can occur 24 to 48 hours after an inciting event. If you look at this situated fat saturated axial image, you can see edema involving the muscles, including the pronate arteries. Regarding thoracic outlet syndrome, the findings overlap with carpal tunnel syndrome. We may or may not see cervical rib fibrous facial bands causing compression of the brachial plexus. If you look here at these images, this is the coronal reconstruction of the cervical spine. You can see the bone, which represents the accessory cervical rib. And on T1 and T2 weighted images, we can see the edema involving the nerves compressed by the accessory cervical rib. You can see that the nerves are edematous and thickened secondary to compression by the cervical rib. The tenosynovitis will cause radial-sided wrist pain with inability to abduct the thumb. Also, it may cause a swelling, crepitus, or pain on the radial side. It affects the abductor pollicis longus and the extensor pollicis brevis muscles. If you look at this image, you will see the tendons of the abductor pollicis longus and the extensor pollicis brevis that appear edematous. Also, another example you can see here, on T2-weighted fat-saturated images, you can see the diffuse edema in this case due to the curvian tenosynovitis. And on T1-weighted images, you can see these tendons that appear thickened, indicating edema. Carpometacarpal arthritis will cause sclerosis between trapezium and the proximal first metacarpal bone, resulting in the first carpometacarpal joint subluxation. If you look at this image, you can see the sclerosis and subluxation affecting the first carpometacarpal joint. Another example showing the same findings, there are degenerative changes with subluxation of the first carpometacarpal bone. 
Regarding fractures of the distal radius, Collie's fracture will be associated with median nerve involvement in about 0.2 to 12% of cases in which there will be laceration or contusion of the nerve. Classic example of Collis fracture, this fracture might cause compression or laceration or contusion of the median nerve simulating carpal tunnel syndrome. Also comminuted fractures are associated with edema and hematoma causing mass effect on the nerve. Sometimes it is caused by callus formation or bony deformity. Like for example, in this Collis fracture, we can see there will be a hematoma resulting in compression of the median nerve. Carpal instabilities are characterized by degenerative changes and hypertrophic bone formation. Dorsal intercalated segment instability, also known as DISI, DC, is characterized by displaced lunate toward proximal carpal tunnel. This diagram shows you how to calculate the DC. If the angle between the axis of the lunate and the rest of the carpal bones is between 30 to 60, well, this is within normal. If it is more than 80, this represents dorsal intercalated segment instability or DC. Like for example, in this image, this is a T1 weighted image. You can see the angle is obviously more than 80 degrees. Another example in this image, you can see the angle is way more than 80 degrees. Well, guys, this was all for today's episode. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and tell your friends about us. If you have any comments, write them in the comment section. See you next Friday at 5 p.m. This was Dr. Ahmed Abdul Wahab, and this is Highlights in Radiology Season 2. Bye. Yeah.